Hello, welcome again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. And we are the, the Fair, Fair Tax, Tax Guys. Guys. And a Fair Tax Merry Christmas tomorrow to all of you. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if the Fair Tax became law tomorrow and give everybody a Christmas present? Uh, on Christmas Day, oh, that would be oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, maybe next year. But I think we're going to need more than Santa Claus to get this Fair Tax done. Oh, we might. But I tell you yeah. what, all it takes, it does not take a majority. It just takes a very persistent minority to get something through. That's right. Because not everybody supported the women's suffrage, not every support everybody supported, you know, the civil rights movement, but a very persistent bunch of folks got both of those things done, and that's what's going to happen with a fair tax. Yep. Yep. And that's why we do these videos every week. All right. Uh, uh, you, you wanted to get a grassroots corner in real quickly before we go back to one of our best of Fair Tax Power Radio episodes. Yep. Um, this when this uh, episode streams, it's actually going to be a few days before this report. But anyways, is the big break finally coming? Alabama is poised to become the first state in the union to get a state level fair tax. Now, I know we've talked about this before, but there's some new developments here that I thought I'd, I'd share with you. Thanks to the hard work of uh, State Director Chuck Bailey and his team, the Alabama Economic Freedom Act, the state level fair tax for Alabama, has been pre-filed in the legislature. The new legislative session begins February 4th, uh, 2020, and it's coming very quickly. Chuck has had numerous meetings with stakeholders to discuss the legislation, including 26 visits since October 30th, and he plans more. He, uh, he reports uh, good feedback. The visits on December 5th included the Alabama Farmers Federation, the Alabama Truckers Association, and two lobbyist firms. Uh, they're also planning uh, meetings, combination meetings, between Convention of States organization and the Fair Tax Town Hall. All right, and Bob and I are going to try to get to one of those in Alabama. We yeah, there's a possibility that we can make this work to get up there. I would love to interview those folks. Yeah, you yeah. cannot overstate how huge it would be for the cause of the national fair tax to see it adopted at the state level at a state, and Georgia's trying to do the same thing. Yeah, to have it adopted at the state level, and folks can see how well it works. When they get their prebates every month, when they no longer have any withholding from their paycheck for state income tax, that's something a lot of folks across the entire political spectrum are going to like. And once they see how well it works, it, it's, it's history. The income tax is history. And we need to uh, we need to make an impression on the uh, the members of the Convention of States action, all right? To, because the fair tax and the Convention of States fit hand in glove. Uh, a couple more things here. There is no seriously organized opposition, except perhaps for a radio talk show host who doesn't like the prebate. Well, how could you not like the? Uh, obviously, well, he doesn't understand. Well, he doesn't the have to sign up for it. <laughs> it. It's not mandatory, folks. If you don't want it, you don't have to take it. <laughs> But the, the prebate is an absolutely essential part of the fair tax. The fair tax would never have a chance without the prebate. It, prebate, it is the key to fairness, okay? At the national level, former Alabama Attorney General and current congressional candidate uh, for Alabama District Number 2, Troy King, has signed the fair tax pledge. That's good. And we've got some activity uh, here locally with the, uh, you know, uh, Congressman Yoho is, uh, uh, announced his retirement at the end of this term, and there's several people lining up to run for mm -hmm. his uh, his position, too. Indeed. So that's going to be interesting. So, oh. all right. Oh, this is getting hot on the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah, that, that fire is burning real high. I had to throw that in there. But, uh, that, that's a good idea, and so we're going to proceed away with one of our best of Fair Tax Power Radio episodes. If I had to pick my favorite one of all the ones we've done, this is it. The, and it, it is, is a dramatic representation of how tax policy affects population and wealth. Yeah, yeah. So this this is an episode that uh, we originally aired back in the summer, I believe, uh, How Money Walks. So we're going to show you the main part of that episode, and then we're going to come back and say goodbye. Oh, so, check this out. It's really cool. All right. Enjoy. Can we start having fun now? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, this is something. Oh, th this is going to be good. Every now and then we will come across, and in this case we've got to uh, give credit to Karen Walby, yep. who is our economist working with the Fair Tax. She turned us on to this particular website. It's called How Money Walks. 
all one word, howmoneywalks.com. And I'll, and, I'll, I'll put this on here. <coughs> it's howmoneywalks.com slash IRS dash tax dash my migration. You'll see it along the bottom here. Okay, what this is, this website has visualized IRS data. The IRS has been keeping track of how much money moves across state lines, who's losing money, who's gaining money, which state, and it also tracks it in population mode. You can look at it in terms of how many dollars have left this state or how many people have left this state. All and right. people ask us all the time, Ron, how do we know that the fair tax will work? <laughs> you know, well, here is proof yeah. that high tax states drive people and money away. Right. Lower tax states, where the tax system is not as onerous as, as it is in other places, those places Places, attract people and attract money so we're going to look at they've got a map of the United States here you'll have to pop up a picture of this yep. and it has varying shades of green and red and yep. the brightest green are the states that are gaining the most the brightest red are the states that are losing the most and we want to go into a couple of, and this break, you open up one of these states here, you can click on this, and we, we really don't can't show this, but you go to the uh, howmoneywalks.com, this IRS tax migration page, and you can click on any one of the states. It'll open that up and show you county by county which counties are gaining people, which counties are gaining money, and which ones are losing. Yeah, no, I just and, uh, clicked for, New York. You're, you're from New York, so you can do New York, and <laughs> I'm going to do Florida. Okay. All right. So I clicked on New York. Uh, you should see that graphic up on, on the uh, TV screen That right is now a bright computer. red one. Yeah. And you'll notice in New York, the, the uh, first off, New York is essentially losing lots of money because people are voting with their feet, all right? Um, the Over on the left-hand side, this is thinking about moving to New York, uh, see how much it will cost you and so forth. New York lost $99.49 in annual gross income. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Adjusted annual, gross income. Adjusted gross income. <laughs> adjusted gross income, thank you. Uh, from like 93 uh, to 2016, all right? It's quite, they've, they've lost a lot. And then when you click on population mode above that, and you'll see this now, they've also lost a lot of people <laughs> for in that time. Uh, 1.7 million. Why? Well, and you can see on the map that, I mean, I'm familiar with New York because that's where I grew up. And the areas that are the brightest red down around New York City and Long Island, Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo, uh, the big cities and so forth. They're losing people. And now, let's go back to the main map. All right, we're back at the United States. And now, Bob, you're going to do Florida. Yeah, I am, but I want to mention something I heard the other day. Uh, Governor Cuomo in New York. Oh, I, yeah? I never thought I would hear this coming from someone like Governor Cuomo. He seems to be realizing that tax the rich, tax the rich, tax the rich has an upper limit. And if you try to go above that, all you're going to do is drive money and people away. Exactly. He has finally figured that out. So hopefully the folks there in your state will, will be getting some relief. But I, yeah, wouldn't, I yeah. wouldn't bet on it. So but, <clears throat> anyways, uh, so, okay. so that's a red state. I mean, you can see on the U.S. map, New York was a red state. They are losing money and people. Now, in Florida... Yes. It's a little different story. Now, Florida is one of the states here in the country that has no income tax at all. And you look at the list of states that have no income tax, uh, Florida, bright green on this map. Yep. Nevada, bright green on this map. New Hampshire is a lighter colored green. South Dakota is a lighter colored green. Tennessee is dark green. Texas, dark green. So all of these states that have no income tax, the only one that has any red at all is Alaska, and that's kind of a, a I wouldn't live up there, it's just too cold. <laughs> but the Washington is a, is bright green. Wyoming is a slightly, uh, slightly uh, lighter green. But all of these states that have have no income tax are the ones according to this how money walks thing they are the ones that are gaining wealth they are the ones that are gaining population and what is so funny uh, if you look at Florida I'll go ahead and pop that up right here yep and over here on the, on the left hand side you can see that it gained wealth it gained 27.89 billion dollars of New York's money <laughs> you see that you saw how that how much was fleeing New York 27.89 billion dollars flew out of New York and landed in Florida. 
Yeah. Uh, they, they got 18.29 billion from New Jersey, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, all of that money flowing from those states down here to Florida. Yeah. Now, Florida yeah, we, actually did lose a little bit to North Carolina, a little bit to Texas, a little bit to Tennessee. And very, yeah, much smaller amounts to Tennessee. I mean, those are those are states that are competing with us because, mm-hmm. you know, most of those don't have a, a, an Texas, income tax. Texas, no income tax. Tennessee, no income tax. <laughs> So, so that's it. Yeah, but you look at Florida, most on the county by county basis, most of that is the, I mean, really dark green where you are gaining a lot of money and a lot of people. And as you looked in New York, let's see where in Florida the trouble spots are. <laughs> Southeast Florida, Miami Dade County, which might as well be located on Long Island <laughs> for their, for their, uh, the politicians that get imported down there. That is a bright red spot in Florida. Yeah. People are leaving Miami in droves. Uh, money is leaving Miami right around Gainesville Alachua County just north of where we are now that is where the University of Florida is yeah a uh, you know a really uh, liberal and college they, town they, they are Alachua they are County believes in its taxes they are yeah they are yeah my daughter lives there I hear about that yeah so <laughs> they, are, they are losing folks as well and where else Leon County. Let's see. What's in Leon County? Hmm. Tallahassee. That's oh, where yeah, all the, the state level Congress critters are. <laughs> so if you stay away from where the government center is, where the big university is, and down there in Miami as well, everywhere else in Florida, most of it is the is dark green. So they are gaining a lot of places. So there is the proof, folks, that low tax policies attract people. They attract money. High tax policies drive money and people away. It's right there in, in green and red and various other shades. And, and, um, and Florida has gained almost two million people in, yeah. the, in that similar time frame. Yeah, and Florida has also gained $156.10 billion. How much did New York lose? I don't remember. You'll have to call yeah, that back up. Yeah, go back. Anyways, their loss is our gain. Florida yeah. gained $156.10 billion in adjusted gross income. And I know a small portion of that move was my wife and I. Okay, now this <laughs> thing says that, included that, in there. that was between 1992 and 2016. Yeah. And these are IRS figures. This That's isn't right. something that somebody's pulling up out of there. This How Money Walks people have, yep. have put the IRS figures and uh, kind of made your visual things out of them. But there, there's your proof. Why the fair tax there's, beats the heck out of the income tax. There's no question and about easier it. Co- income tax, uh, in, income tax drives people away. No income tax attracts people. I, I love that. That's that's really cool. So again, this is HowMoneyWalks.com and the page we're looking at is IRS-Tax-Migration. We'll have that up there. Yeah. So you can go up there. You can look at your state. Now, wait till after the show before you go looking this up on your computer, all yeah. right? But it's interesting that the, the states that are in the darkest red that are losing the most, where are they they're up in the Northeast. New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, the entire New England area. The cradle of the revolution. With the exception of New Hampshire. New yeah. Hampshire is on the no income tax. That's they right. have no income tax in New Hampshire. Yeah. They are doing a lot better than their neighbors up live, there. Live free or die. Yeah. Michigan is, is bright red. Illinois is bright red. California, of course, is bright red. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, rather than going through all this you know, one state at a time, we'll just point you to the spot. How money walks. You can open up your state and see how much you're gaining or how much you're losing. But there, there, there is just proof positive. That how tax po- how tax policy yeah. affects population, yeah. whether you're going to gain or lose, affects wealth, whether you're going to gain or lose. Now scale that up to a worldwide scale, and instead of doing states within a country, let's look at countries within the world. The yeah. same principle applies. Oppressive tax policies will drive people and will drive money out of your country and tax-friendly policies towards business will attract folks. You have a list there that is amazing. Well, I got this. I started looking, you know, for companies moving out, and they call it corporate inversions, all right? This article is from uh, 2015. Uh, It's from world.tax, world.tax, by uh, Alexandra Ball. All right, a corporate inversion is a deal in which a U.S. company acquires or merges with a foreign one that operates on a similar line of business and shifts its domicile abroad to benefit 
from a more favorable tax regime. Re regime. It's in the first sentence. They're doing this because of taxes. Okay. Now, I'm not going to read the whole article, but down here in the third paragraph, remember, this was in 2015. Although Barack Obama labeled inversions as unpatriotic, and the Treasury issued, issued rules to eliminate such practices, U.S. companies still seem to be on the move. Yeah, because they're trying to protect themselves. They are still going to do what's in their economic best interest. That's right. And, and sometimes it's in your economic best interest just to pay the penalty and go on. <laughs> yeah. And so when the tax code gets too onerous, not only is it difficult uh, and expensive, uh, but then you got on top of that, you got all the crazy regulations. Uh, you know, they're they're tired of it, and they find a benefit by merging or moving their their uh, corporate headquarters outside of the United States. It happens, unfortunately, all too often. Now we've also found that uh, since 2017, when uh, President Trump started uh, ordering a reduction in the regulations and they had the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act which lowered some of the rates, All right, gave us tax relief, not tax reform, but tax relief, we saw the opposite. We saw things started to, uh, to turn around. But, I so I went on the internet and looked for, okay, what companies have gone over, overseas? And I found this article. This is amazing. This will curl your hair. All right. Ten iconic U.S. companies that have left America. This is from April of 2016. Uh, Chris Morris, uh, CNBC.com. America has lost the right to call a lot of iconic companies its own over the past several years. Whether through overseas acquisitions or inversions, which we just talked about, um, in which a U.S. Com a corporation uh, reincorporates overseas uh, following the purchase of a foreign company names many people grew up with have flown the coop all right <laughs> but and so let's let's look at some of these this is gonna I found this amazing Burger King Burger King no longer has its corporate headquarters in the United yeah. States you can still get a whopper down the street yeah <laughs> but Burger King is now a Canadian company yeah yeah, Burger King, all right? Budweiser. Budweiser, their their corporate headquarters is in Belgium now. Well, that's actually Anheuser-Busch. That's the uh, the brewery that right. Budweiser is yeah. one of their brands. So all of the Anheuser-Busch brands. I think I, now that's that's not a project that I am really familiar with. No, Bud, but still Bud Light, Michelob, I, mean, I don't know what else they make. We've seen but we've seen all of that Budweiser stuff. commercials on TV since we were you know, well, I'm a NASCAR fan. Budweiser had a big presence in NASCAR for a yeah, long time. Yeah, sure. So seen that. Now, there's a company called Medtronic. They make uh, medical equipment. They're now in Ireland. Uh, I know firsthand that, uh, uh, not firsthand, but Ireland has, uh, They some years back, they lowered their corporate income tax down to about like 12.5%. Um, so uh, about a lot half of companies of what ours was less than half of what the, was in the United States. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, companies are incorporating in Ireland, including the one that my youngest son works for. Okay, <laughs> Purina, they're now based in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the dog food, cat food folks. Yep, yeah. uh, McDermott, which is not a name that's well known, but they're a large construction company. They're now located in Panama. Seagate Technology. They make hard drives yeah, and so you know, forth. Anything about computers, you've heard Seagate. They yeah, make uh, most right. of the hard drives in, in a lot of your computer systems yeah, here. Yeah, and I learned a long time ago, there's <laughs> really only like three or four manufacturers of hard drives, mm -hmm. and Seagate is one of them. So this is a big deal. It's one of the biggest ones, and they've flown the coop to the Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands, yeah. All right. Good humor. My ice cream yeah. has gone overseas. United Kingdom. They're now located in United Kingdom. All right. Frigid Air. Sweden. They've gone to Sweden. All right. Allergan, which is another pharmaceutical company, they're in uh, Ireland. And Lucky Strike, they're now in England. So, I mean, these are names so that have we been around. Doing, if we were doing countries of the world rather than states within the United States, the United States would probably be kind of red right yeah. now. 
Yeah. Again, yeah. in the red, for those of you who missed it earlier, on the How Money Walks site, states that are losing population and losing wealth to other places were, were bright red. So the United States is definitely losing jobs. They, yeah. I'm not sure about population. We've got folks trying to get in here. But uh, they are losing wealth to China. They are losing wealth to all places that have you know, better tax policies. It's, yeah. it's, that's, uh, that's not uh, the only uh, factor in the equation, but that's a big one. That's a big one, yeah. I mean, in that article, they, they singly focus on the tax code as the reason for these companies uh, jumping ship. And it's, you know, I have to take... Well, your corporate inversion, by definition, is seeking better tax treatment. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, uh, President Obama can call it unpatriotic if he wants, but I don't think he really understands why people are doing this. It's the, yep. it's the tax code, you know, and the regulations. Yeah, companies are going to do what is in their economic best interests. That's right. Even if their economic best interests tell you just, you know, pay the penalty, whatever the government tries to charge you for doing that. And... Uh, or the tariffs or whatever and, uh, and keep on doing it. You are going to do, every business is going to do what any individual will do. You do what is best for your own bottom line. What's going to make your wallet the fattest? And so, if, if, if that means you go overseas, because, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat here. If you have to go overseas for more favorable tax treatments, you do it. Yeah, that's right. So what's the way out of this mess? I mean, how do we start bringing companies back into the United States? Well, if oppressive tax policies drive companies away, mm. I would think that friendly tax policies, uh, where you have a lower rate and you do not have to spend, uh, don't have to hire legions of tax accountants and tax attorneys, your compliance costs, are, in a lot of cases, your compliance costs, a, a business will spend more money just complying with the tax code than they will actually paying tax. Yeah, so all right. and all of that gets passed on to the consumer by the way. So if you get rid of the corporate income tax, you get rid of just about all of the compliance costs that go along with it. Doing business in the United States becomes much 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 less expensive than it is now, and that is going to what's going to draw all of the people that are currently overseas. It's going to draw those jobs back to the United States, provide a better a higher standard of living for everyone which is what all the politicians on both sides of the aisle say they want yeah so if that's what they really want all the politicians on both sides of the aisle should be supporting the fair tax because yeah. that's what the fair tax is going to do yeah because and only the and fair there, tax is going to accomplish and there's the this. proof right there on the money walk site yep <laughs> yep only the the fair tax is the only bill and in fact the only fair tax is the fair tax Okay, that's the you only thing. You copyright that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it, you know, we've talked about it. Bob and I have been doing this for four years, and uh, we never get tired of it because we think it's very important. The fair tax really will help our corporations, which means, and remember, corporations are made of people. They have board of directors, they have managers, they have employees, they have customers. Corporations are people. They're not this nebulous thing out there. You know, they're not a building or a group of buildings. They're people. And so if you make it better for corporations, you're making it better for those people in the corporations and their customers, whatever product or service you know, they are rendering. So we need to help these people because it's a way of helping ourselves. And it, you know, and that strikes me. The fair tax is a way of helping ourselves. It it's is. It's not necessarily a way of helping the people in Washington, is it? <laughs> no, no, that, that no. is. So and that, that explains why it hasn't been done already. Well, right. Randy Fisher pointed out something we saw the other day, a map showing the probability of you're getting audited. And the your probability of getting audited if you live right around Washington D.C. is pretty close to zero. Yeah. Oh, funny thing about that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so anyway. Yeah. So th there's the proof. Yeah. So, anyways, it's it's the fair tax. Now, last week we encouraged you to uh, go to your your congressman, your representative, uh, no matter if they're Republican or, or Democrat. Well, this is more information, all right? This is good information you can bring. If you want to see businesses come to your state and your area, you need to give them a favorable tax scenario. 
and they and they will follow. You know, if you build it, mm -hmm. they will come. Yeah, and as as the states within the country are competing with each other, all of the countries within the world are competing with each other, and you want to be a bright green as far as the how money walks things goes. You want to have a friendly tax policy that will bring you population, that will bring you wealth, and I I want to win. Yeah, we need right. we need to get the president on board with this fair tax. So he he talks about winning a lot. Yeah. This will be a winner. So, yeah. So, uh, anyways, we we need you to continue to put the pressure on your elected representatives, and not just at the federal level. I mean, the, you know, your representative to the House, um, and but uh, well, a lot of times the the. the you know, there, there's a, a step ladder there. People yeah. run for office at the local level, then mm -hmm. they step up to the state level, then they step up to the federal level. Yeah. And if we can get people at the state and local levels to understand the fair tax and like the fair tax, if they progress further up the ladder to a federal level thing, then we don't have to educate them. They're they're there already. Yep, yeah, that's right. So so uh, just just don't think because somebody doesn't have a vote on the matter that it's not important to educate them on the benefits of the fair tax. So we need you to help us out here. I mean, Bob and I are doing this every week and because we think it's important. And uh, now we, we need you folks to step up, all right? Uh, do what you can to learn about the fair tax. This, this episode about corporate inversion is very important, all right? If, yeah. like we said, yeah. if, if companies... If you want your job to come back from overseas, support the fair tax. Mm -hmm. These are going to move from a high tax state to a low tax state. The same is going to happen from one country to another. All right, and uh, this list of iconic companies who no longer reside in this country is just astounding, and it's because of the tax code. Burger and King, Budweiser, Purina. I mean, those are names everybody knows. Yeah. Seagate Technology, something the uh, computer savvy would know. Good humor. Anybody who likes ice cream goes there. <laughs> yes. So I mean, these these are iconic. It started. Frigidaire. They were founded in the United States, and they moved. In other words. Our tax policy in this country drove them away, or a more friendly tax policy in another country attracted them. So why don't we want to be one of those friendly places that's attracting people rather than throwing them out? But well, we know the obstacle. Yes. All right. The obstacle is Congress. It's Congress right. critters who are addicted to the payroll income tax system. Yeah. Yeah, so because they milk it for campaign cash, and that's where we have to concentrate our efforts. Okay, so here's more information for you. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, preceding rerun. I'll, I'll call it rerun. We'll we'll just call it uh, best of episode. Yeah. A fair tax power radio. The yeah. How money? Well, that was some rather amazing stuff in there. It's if anybody dramatic. has any doubt that high taxes, oppressive taxation drives population and wealth away to other places that don't have oppressive taxation. Uh, those numbers should uh, should do it for you. And it seems like the states that have, you know, talking about here within the country, um, the states that have the high taxes, I mean, they got an income tax, a sales tax, a this tax, and that tax, and so forth, they don't seem to learn from their mistakes. Yeah. They are bleeding people and money, but and what? yet... The problem is people leave those states and bring those policies with them to their new yeah. states. That is, that is right a problem. Uh, I'll tell you, after watching that, if I didn't already live in Florida, I would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My wife and I are very glad that we moved here, oh, about 25 years ago now. Yep. So that's good. So anyways, we hope you enjoyed that. We hope you have a, a wonderful Christmas. Um, Yes, We're, we have another Best Of episode lined up for yeah. next week, New Year's Eve. The Fair Tax Logo Store, I'll do oh, a quickie real, on this. Real quick. Okay. Um, we now have the earrings, all right? They're, they are kind of large. I have right? to take a picture so of that. I'm going to have to get a, uh, have my wife model some of these and get a picture of her. The tote bags, these, I believe these are called, I looked on their website, and they call them the, the daytime convention tote bag, something like that. Anyways, but it's nice. It's, it's heavy duty. It's got a zipper, and these things are dirt cheap in there, all right? And people know what you're talking about here. So th that's good. The umbrellas are back. All right, nice umbrellas. We got the uh, scrolling banners that Bob and I use at every episode. There's all kinds of stuff. There's the palm cards, the prebate cards. All right, 
Oops, which are a very popular item if I can get it out of my pocket. Basic information about the fair tax on one side, prebate schedule on the back side, which will be new in a few weeks. Um, and we got some new yard signs too. So anyways, go to fairtaxlogostore.org, peruse through the pages, find something there that interests you, whether it's a hat or a shirt or a tote bag or whatever, pens. You can get a bunch of these uh, inexpensive pens. And if you run a business, leave these at your place of business. Let people take them, okay? That's a good way to, to spread the word. So um, fairtaxlogostore.org, fairtaxlogostore.org. All right, if you got a question or comment for us, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com is our email address. You can leave us a question or comment on the Fair Tax Guys Facebook page and uh, Fair Tax Guys without the in front of it. Fairtaxguys.com is where you can go back and look at some of the other old episodes that we've yep. done here. And uh, yep. some of them are pretty good. And you'll see another one next week. Okay. That's going to wrap it up. Okay. Thank you for the watching. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Molero. The Fair Tax Guys reminding you that the Fair Tax is the only truly fair tax. And once you understand it, you'll demand it. Have a very Merry Christmas. The Fair Tax is a tax replacement plan where we take all the federal income taxes, including corporate, personal, gift, and estate taxes, and replace them with one national consumption tax on new purchases, above the poverty level only. This form of consumption tax comes with no exceptions and is progressive, not regressive. The poor are not paying more, and the rich are not paying less. What makes it progressive is that all Americans are untaxed up to the poverty level via the prebate, much like your standard tax deduction. The taxes are collected by retail businesses at state level, so the system is more accountable. The IRS is done away with, and you have control over your money and what the overall tax rate your household pays. The fair tax is revenue neutral so the government receives the same amount of money as they do now, and it's fair because you decide what's fair, not them. To learn more, visit fairtax.org and be sure to like us on social media to help educate your friends and spread the word.